Basketball Championship. Today's third contest features from Ann Arbor, Michigan, the University of Michigan Wolverines. And from Boise, Idaho, the Boise State University Broncos. Let's meet the starting lineups. For Boise State, at forward, a 6'3 junior from Inglewood, California, number 24, Wilson Foster. For Michigan, at forward, a 6'7 junior from Flint, Michigan, number 41, Glenn Rice. For the Broncos, at forward, a 6'6 senior from Chicago, Illinois, number 42, Arnell Jones. For the Wolverines, at forward, a 6'10 sophomore from Romulus, Michigan, number 52, Terry Mills. For Boise State, at center, a 6'9 senior from Bakersfield, California, number 52, Greg Dodd. For Michigan, at center, a 6'9 junior from Grand Rapids, Michigan, number 35, Loy Vaught. For the Broncos, at guard, a 6'3 junior from Bakersfield, California, number 14, Chris Childs. For the Wolverines, at guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Cambridge, Massachusetts, number 21, Rumiel Robinson. For Boise State, at guard, a 6'2 senior from Seattle, Washington, number 30, Doug Usatello. And for Michigan at guard, a 6'3 senior from Kenton, Ohio, number 25, Gary Grant. And the coach for Boise State University, Mr. Bobby Dye. The head coach for the University of Michigan, Mr. Bill Frieder. We'll return to the opening tip-off right after these messages. Well, Zetcher is the referee, and Bob Garibaldi and David Day are the two umpires. We're about ready to go here at the University of Utah's home facility, the John M. Huntsman Center. And Coach, we'll see right away whether or not we'll have a, uh, oh, any kind of a running game like we saw earlier today. We're, the floor may still be smoking a little bit from that one. Well, I think you're right that we saw an example of an up-tempo team dictating the game in that Loyola Marymount Wyoming game. And uh, this game has the same kind of challenge. Who's going to dictate what kind of tempo is going to be played? If you didn't hear, Loyola Marymount defeated Wyoming 119 to 115. Grant in the Mills missed the triple. And we get a quick foul. Well, as you can see on the floor, Boise State is really physically outmanned up front. Uh, Greg Dodd is really their only big body in there, 6'9", 235. The Michigan front line has three players about that size. Well, the first foul was called on Wilson Foster of Boise State. This is Gary Grant. Again, a beautiful pass and wide open for the first basket of the ball game was Loy Vaught. Vaughn's just kind of moved into the uh, starting lineup for Michigan. Hughes was starting there earlier in the year, and we saw Michigan play. We saw Michigan with a press to kind of speed up the tempo to get it to their liking. That's Arnie Jones, number 42. 24 is Wilson Foster. Greg Dodd is number 52. The Broncos are running their passing game, uh, a four-man passing game. Usually they keep Dodd in the post. Chris Childs taking that shot and missing it. And we have a foul called on Hardell Jones. And Boise State quickly has picked up two fouls in the first 50 seconds of the ball game. Boise State, of course, the champion and the tournament champion of the Big Sky Conference. Michigan here as a result of their runner-up finish in the Big Ten. Both teams have won 24 ball games this year. Boise State 24 and 5, Michigan 24 and 7. Boise State, but we call a half-court team, both on offense and defense. Grant getting it into Mills. And Mills, four inches taller than Arnold Jones, gets the two-pointer. We well, indicated a good example of that size differential. Very right physical team, very big. 215, 225, 235, 6'9. Some people feel Mills is 6'10. And Rice is 6'7. And Vaughn at 6'9. Young players, too. 4 nothing. Michigan leading, minute and a half into the game. Michigan uh, needs a good start. Frank and uh, Boise State wants to control the tempo. You see him handle the ball on offense. They want Michigan to play offense or defense about 35 seconds each time. Robinson, and he is fouled. 
by Chris Childs. That's three fouls on Boise State in the early going. So the Broncos have not gotten off to the kind of start they hope to. No, it was important for them. Michigan State has not been playing well uh, lately. They've lost three of their last five games, and uh, they're trying to get on track. And here, uh, Robinson steals the ball and uh, misses the layup, but gets a pretty good one. Wolverines have put Romeo Robinson at the free throw line. He is a 65% free throw shooter and makes the first one of the night. 6 2 sophomore out of Cambridge, Massachusetts. One of the outstanding high school players in the country uh, with a red shirt. Freshman last year, not playing. Uh, Proposition 48 player. They have two Wills and Robinson. A really freshman. They're playing the first time. They're sophomores in eligibility, but they're playing the collegiate basketball for the first time. Bill Freeder's team in the NCAA for the fifth consecutive year. They trap in the backcourt, and Doug Usatello takes it into the fourth court. Well, the field can't lose anything. They're going to pressure. Even if Boise State gets the ball down the floor, they're not going to want to shoot it very quickly. They want to handle it a little bit. It's a 6 nothing lead for University of Michigan. Dodd having trouble handling the ball. In fact, Boise State's running a five-man passing game here. They're bringing Dodd out and Arnell Jones out in the rotation, in the motion. As Childs getting it into Dodd. Dodd, the only player with the kind of size that Michigan has, a 6'9", 235 pound senior, and he gets the first two for Boise State. He might play quite a bit. I think they're going to need to hit him in the ball game for a majority of the time. It's only averaging seven points a game for them. And about only five playing, rebounds a game. Only playing about 23 minutes a game, too, Bruce. That's right. This is Gary Grant, the general. He's the number two scorer in Michigan history. Mills did not get the roll, or bought it. It was, but he was fouled. I believe the foul is on Loy Bott. Offensive foul. It's a 6-2 lead for Michigan over Boise State. Boise State beating the Wolverines back by the floor that time. The basket by Wilson Foster. Well, they want to stay close early, and they've done that. This is Romeo Robinson working on Doug Yusatello. And Yusatello steps the ball away. And a chance to tie now for the Broncos as Chris Childs brings it back against Romeo Robinson. This is an excellent defensive basketball team. They're number two in the nation as far as points allowed, 56 a game. They want to keep this game at 56. Well, between 56 and 365, and they've got a great chance to win. Michigan, meanwhile, has gone over 100 on seven occasions this year. And the foul may be on Gary Grant. On contrast, Michigan's a number 10 scoring team in the nation at 88.6. So it'll be interesting to see, do we get close to the 88 or do we get close to the 56? Right now, it is 6-4 Michigan, 16-34 to play in the first half. And we get the first substitute. Mills comes out of the ball game, and number 55, Mark Hughes, a 6'8", 235-pound junior from Muskegon, checks in for Coach Bill Frieder's Michigan Wolverines. He doesn't score much for the Wolverines at 4'6", but he was their starter early in the year. Again, another physical specimen. Good rebounder. Yusatello trying to take the baseline, and apparently stepped out of bounds with it. Here's a good hard-nosed player, Yusatello, number 30, leads the league in steals. Assist player, not much of a score, but really quarterbacks this uh, Boise State Bronco team. Gary Grant working on Chris Childs, two of the outstanding guards in the country. With the ball now is Mark Hughes, 55. This is Lloyd Vaught. Vaught being harassed by Dodge. And the pass and the steal. By Yusatello and Chris Childs at the other end, and we're tied. So after being down 6 nothing, Boise State. Well, wait, they wave that basket off. Right, they're going to call five seconds down here. Five second count. Now, let's see. Is that they're going to go with a. There's that steal. That's what they indicated, three. right, down. Defense, five second violation down here. Garibaldi had called that before they stole the ball, but you can see the trouble Michigan's having against the uh, aggressive defense. Half-court pressure. So it is 6-4 in favor of Michigan. 
This is Arnell Jones. Dobbs, Chris Childs. Well, the Broncos want Michigan to play a lot of defense, about 35 to 40 seconds every time they have the basketball. And they've done that so far in the ball game. Arnell Jones has been pulled out from the basket for the most part, Bruce. He's not playing back there underneath the uh, underneath the basket. That's right. Usually they run a four-man and keep him under there. But they're trying to make all the Michigan players lose now, all those big guys. There's Jones, who's hitting 66% from the field, missing. Incidentally, when we see a Bronco go to the free throw line, perhaps you'll see a little number 54 on the uh, upper left chest. That is in honor of a young man by the name of Jeff Foster, who was killed in an automobile accident in September. And the team at his funeral dedicated the season to him. And that's the reason for that number 54 that's being worn on the Broncos shirt. And he probably really would have helped them, uh, Frank. He's 6'10", but he gave them some muscle and another big body in there that they badly need as far as depth is concerned. Wilson Foster commits the foul. That's four against the Broncos. Number 50, Ryan Sperry. It is 6-4, Michigan in front. We played almost five minutes. Earlier today, North Carolina defeated North Texas State rather handily. Inbounds pass. Hughes with a big follow rebound. Nice play by Hughes. There's a big advantage on the boards, and Michigan could take uh, advantage of that situation. Hughes should get a number offensive board. Hughes, 6'8", 235 pounds. Just simply muscled his way inside. It's 8-4. In favor of the Wolverines. Chris Childs and Gary Grant. Boy, what a great matchup that is. New face in the lineup now is Mike Sater. Number 34 in the lineup for the Boise State Broncos. That's Sater with the ball right now. Also in there is a new face. Number 50 for Boise State. That's Brian Sperry. He's 6'9 and 235. 225. He gets him all over sides. He's averaged about 15 minutes a game. Childs almost had it stripped away, and Sperry comes up with a loose ball. Childs for three. And rebounded by Michigan's Mark Hughes. Nice pass inside the Noy Ball for the Thursday basket. And the Wolverines now lead it 10 to 4. We've played six minutes in the first half. And Coach Bobby Dye is looking for a travel on that. That ball hit him right in the belly. That was a great pass from Robinson, but it was pretty quick. In true traffic, and it looked like he caught him with his hands in his belly and took a step before he got the shot up. Doug Yusatello. Arnell Jones with the ball. This is Chris Childs. Yusatello. Mike Sainer. Sainer's got a brother that played in Washington in the Pac-10. Freshman, a good-looking freshman. About the same size, they really look alike. Sainer's shot. In and out. And again, rebounded off the boards by Loy Buck for the Michigan Wolverines, who lead 10-4, 13-20 to play the first half. Wide open, Gary Grant for two. That is the first basket of the night for the general, who averages 22 points per ball game. Unanimous All-American. I think there have been nine All-American teams announced so far, and Gary Grant has been on every one of them. He's got great quickness, about 6'2". He's been the defensive player of the year, and the... Big Ten for the last two years. Maybe we'll get that honor again this year. The voting hasn't been determined as yet. Quick quickness. Good outside shooter. Mr. Tello. Mike Sainer. Very structured offense. Arnell Jones, his second shot of the night. Didn't get the roll again. And again, the rebound off the defensive glass by Lloyd Buck. One thing about it, Bruce, uh, Boise State's getting one shot, and that's about it. Well, that's right. He gets a physical size, and so they need to shoot a good percentage if you're not going to get that one shot. And this is going to be a big while wearing it out. That's four points for Mark Hughes. He's already got his average, and we're only uh, eight minutes into the ball game. 14 to 4, 10 point lead for Michigan over Boise State. Bobby Dye, a very crafty coach for Boise State, took Cal State Fullerton to the Sweet 16 back in 1978. They had a couple of big upsets. Well, they had a great chance to beat Arkansas in that final game, but lost it by two points. And a whistle by the foul. Uh, I believe it's on uh, Mark Hughes. That'll be his first, third against the team. There's Bobby Dye. So, with the uh, clock down to 11 minutes and 50 seconds remaining to play in the first half, there's a timeout on the floor with the score. 
Michigan 14, and Boise State 4. The NCAA is conducting research during this basketball tournament, and we'd like your participation. Would you like to see more women's basketball on television? If your answer is yes, be sure to dial 900-260-2221. And if it's no, 900-260-2222. Well, let's see in the early going. Boise State is 2 out of 9, Bruce, 22%. Michigan, 6 out of 8, 75%. Rebounding, favoring Michigan, 6 to 1. Wolverines have turned it over four times, but it really hasn't mattered. Now it's the shooting. Both teams are good shooting teams. They rank high. Uh, they're both number one in their leagues. Boise State, 52% for the year, number 11 in the nation. Child Michigan. just turned it over with a, another walk is number three, so good shooting teams. And uh, Boise State has made a couple substitutions now. They brought in another three-point shooter right here, the skinny individual. Uh, Brian King. Right. He's a transfer from Oregon State. 6'5", 165-pounder. And we get a blocking foul call. That's on Chris Childs, and that'll be his second. Well, Childs is a premier defensive player, but he's got a real challenge because Gary Grant is uh, maybe a little quicker than he is. They're about the same size. 6-3. That's five team fouls on Boise State, two on Chris Childs, two on Wilson Foster. And right now, Michigan is on an 8-0 run. They've scored eight unanswered points to lead 14-4. Oh, Arnell Jones intercepting, two on two. And the blocking foul is on Michigan's Mike Griffin, number 20, who's in the ballgame now. Michigan right now is running a one-guard offense. They bring Mike Griffin in at 6-7 for Romeo Robertson. And we see this drive. Here's our now Jones. Most valuable player in the Big Sky Conference. Picking up that uh, foul. Arnell is a 65% free throw shooter, as you look at it again. 60 is better from the field than he is from the free throw line. That's right. 60 is very often. Well, I suspect he shoots most of them from in pretty close. He does. But they say he's a pretty good shooter at the 12, 14 feet. A good cut there, didn't he? That's only 15 feet from the free throw line, so he's close enough to probably do a better job than he does. Well, the leading score for Boise State goes 8 minutes and 37 seconds before he gets his first point. And he's second. Arnell is averaging 16.6 of all game, but he gets his first two almost 9 minutes into the game. This is Romeo Robinson being held by Del Sotelo. Oh, big play by Mills. Good pass, too. Great feed by Robinson, who's now taking the point guard over, and uh, Gary Grant is getting a little rest. It is 16-6 in favor of Michigan. Winner of this game will play the winner of the late game here tonight between St. John's and Florida. The other matchup has already been determined with Loyola Marymount to play North Carolina on Saturday. Loyola Marymount winning their 25th game in a row, 119 to 115 over Wyoming. Yusitello shooting the missing, and another rebound off the defensive boards for Mark Hughes. And Yusitello commits a foul. His first and number six against Boise State. Well, the tempo of the game now, uh, with Boise State handling the basketball as much as they are, you need to be close to play that kind of a basketball game, and uh, they just can't let this lead to get built up much more, or that slow tempo is going to work against them as the game goes along. Neil Robinson giving the ball to number 20, Mike Griffin. You know, Michigan's doing all this, Bruce, without Glenn Rice having scored a point. He's the leading scorer in the Big Ten. Missed that shot. And Greg Brock pulls off the rebound. Boise State a little matchup zone there. A little change of uh, something to look at and follow that. Well, he and Grant were just neck and neck in that Big Ten score, one and two. This was calling this one pretty closely. Terry Mills, I believe, drew that foul. Yeah, it is, Jerry Mills. First foul on Mills. That's Greg Dodd, 6'9". Both about the same size bodies there, but uh, Mills comes up with a foul. Well, we've got a timeout on the court. Nine minutes and 55 seconds remaining to play in the first half. With the score, the Michigan Wolverines.
Titans 16 and the Boise State Broncos 6. Okay, any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Well, Boise State has started out hitting only two out of their first ten shots, Bruce, and Michigan, seven out of ten, and that represents the ten-point difference in the ballgame right now. I think that's it. Uh, look at that statistics, that's it right there as you look at the screen here of Boise State, two for nine, Michigan 70 percent. They're capable. They've shot 54 percent as a team for the year. Uh, Boise State, on the other hand, has shot 52, so they're, they're the team that's suffering right now in the early going. Throwing the ball in for Boise State, Ryan King. Well, that possession didn't last long, did it? No, it didn't. And they haven't got anything inside. And you really have to supplement or complement your outside team with inside scoring. And they haven't been able to do that. Ramil Robinson tried to get away from Doug Usatello. Garrett Grant back in the ball game. And Boise stays in their zone. Oh, what a pass. That was about a 30-foot pass that just whistled in the Mark Hughes. 12-point lead now. Biggest of the uh, night for Michigan. Well, the inside game of Michigan has dominated early. You know, I would think it was kind of important for Michigan to get off to a good start, too, Bruce, because they've lost three out of their last five ball games. Yeah, they haven't been playing well over there. They are. That's pretty good uh, distance for Mel Jones. Very good three-pointer. I think that's Wilson Foster, wasn't it? 24. Yeah. Here comes two by Lucitello. That's the thing in five big points. And it is 18 to 10. Well, he's a hard-nosed defensive player. And Gary Grant got a little nonchalant, and he just took that pass right away from him. Boise State stays in their matchup. It's really like a man-to-man. -man. They put pressure on the ball. Romeo Robinson to the hoop. What a move that was. Romeo oh, Robinson. He's quick. Sophomore from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Well, strangely enough, the two leading scorers on these two teams have not scored a basket. Arnell Jones nor Glenn Rice. Neither of those two have a basket at this point. Michigan State straight man-to-man. -to -man, uh, what we call a fairly soft man-to-man. -man. They're letting Boise State run their offense. When they get in the scoring position, then they try to clamp down. But other than that, they're not trying to take the pattern away. Let them surround Arnold Jones. Good drop by Michigan State. Oh, what a fine pass. Did not result in a basket, but it was a fine pass. Final, Final scoring. BYU comes back to beat UNC Charlotte, 98-92. Well, what's happening to the people here? What's happening in the, in the NCAA today? 119 to 115, 98-92. Maybe the change is evident. The three-point play and uh, many more high-scoring games than uh, usually you get in tournament play, where they like to play close to the best. Romeo Robinson, fouled by Arnell Jones. That will be his second. The uh, last eight points for Boise State were scored off of five Michigan turnovers. Well, that's what the Michigan Broncos are hopeful of, that they can create some turnovers and convert some baskets with them. Here we see Ramiro Robinson again, 6'2", 195 pounds. He's good and strong. Ramiro is a 65% free throw shooter, and Arnold Jones now will sit down with two points and two fouls. Robinson gets his third consecutive free throw. And Michigan leads it 21 to 10. Now Glenn Rice, Glenn, incidentally, as you see uh, Mike Griffin go out, has that uh, right hand wrapped. He's seen the dishwasher shot on it on Sunday night. That might be bothering him a little bit. He had a good shot early in the ball game, but I think he's only had one shot. I haven't, I haven't seen the shot chart, but they've got the ball inside. He plays on the perimeter a little more than Boyd or Mills. Scores of some other games today. Kansas State beats LaSalle, 66-53. Kansas State down Baylor, 75-50. There's a three by Brian King. Well, that's what he's in there for. He needs to get some to get it back in the ball game. It's 22-13 now. Michigan leading, 7-23 to play in the half. Mills with an off-balance two-pointer. His third basket. Pretty nice shot for a 6'10", 230-pounder. Well, he's big, young. He's just going to get better every time he gets on the floor. Only a sophomore. And the kind of game that Michigan plays should help his development. An up-tempo game, forcing him to run the floor with that big body. That's, that's going to do everything to help his development. 
Brian King giving the ball to Brian Sperry. And now Chris Childs, who has only one basket himself. That time, Brian King could not get the three-quarter to go down. And Michigan at the other end. In the fast break at two. The transition game by Michigan, Boise State, uh, usually doesn't give up that kind of a basket, but the emphasis they place on defense. But uh, heads up play by Gary Grant. Well, Michigan has doubled it now. They lead 26 13 with 6.20 to play in the first half. Thinking about a three, but changing his mind with Wilson Foster. This is Brian King. Barry, not a surprise dog with that pass. Eight seconds to shoot. Five to shoot. Child beautifully with virtually no time left on the shot clock. Well, you can't play the clock any better than that. First basket of the night for Chris Childs. 540 to play, 26-15 Michigan. There's the alley-oop. Didn't get it. Dodd with a rebound. So Glenn Rice still looking for his first basket and first points of the night. Well, that was a great pass, so behind that zone, that matchup zone, as uh, Boise Strait tries to extend it out to half court. They leave themselves a little vulnerable on the baseline, and Michigan, as big as they are, can get that lob pass. Great job last time on the clock. They're going to get it down there again. Five minutes left to play in the first half. 26-15, Michigan. The tip to three again by Wilson Foster won't go. And Michigan grabs it and runs. Robinson heading right of bounds off the body of Ryan Sperry. By now, the clock shows four minutes and 51 seconds remaining to play. We have a timeout on the floor with the score, the Michigan Wolverines 26 and the Boise State Broncos 15. Welcome back to the John M. Huntsman Center on the campus of the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. I'm Frank Fallon, along with former University of Arizona basketball coach Bruce Larson. And Bruce, again, the shooting percentages just about tell it all at this point, don't they? Well, they still do, but uh, Boise State's picked up a little bit. They're up to 38 uh, percent. Michigan's down about two. And turnovers here, we see four to six, but uh, or five to five, I see on our stat board, uh, close. But the difference, as you indicated, Frank, is still shooting. I think Boise State has the tempo they want. And it scored seven points off the turnovers to six for Michigan. Wolverines up by 11 points. Back to man-to-man -man for Boise State. Price, his first two points of the night. Leading scorer in the Big Ten with an average of 22.1, and his teammate, Gary Grant, an average of 22 points even. And I believe that's the first time in Big Ten history that two teammates have ever finished 1-2 in the conference scoring race. And separated by a tenth of a point. Mike Sainer. Brian King gets three more. Two three-quarters now for Brian King. It's 28-18. Ten-point lead for the Wolverines over the Broncos. Great pass inside the line. Boy, super pass by Ramil Robinson. He averages about four and a half assists per game, scoring nine points a game. Playing in his first year at Michigan, he's going to be a great one. Best thing about him, Coach, is he's only a sophomore. That's right. Mike Sainer. It's 30 to 18 now. Michigan in front, 3:44 before halftime. Well, the other thing that's helped Robinson is that Michigan's a little short on guards. They lost two very good guards. Sean Higgins, uh, one of the top five players in the country at 6'8". I played early, but was academically ineligible. He's not playing, and they lost another guard uh, with an injury, so they've had to go primarily with two guards, so that helped Robinson. He's going to play a lot of minutes. Another great pass from Grant to Terry Mills. Boy, what a pass by Grant. But the inside power of Michigan is really evident here early in this uh, well, throughout this first half. Biggest lead now, 32-18, 14-point advantage. Well, this kind of lead, the kind of offense that Boise State runs, uh, kind of hinders them. It's tough to catch up. Pretty deliberate. Mike Sainer. Well, they're covering up Ryan Kelly. Okay, now. 
Well, they realize he's hit a couple out there, and Coach Streeter's over there on the sideline making sure they get out on him in a hurry. There's the guy who's got to have the good ball game, and he that's his second consecutive turnover. Chris Charles, he simply has not played well in the early going. And Gary Grant gets his second basket of the night. We mentioned earlier that Grant is the second all-time leading scorer in Michigan history now. Second only to Mike McGee, who is the all-time Michigan and, and, and Big Ten champion scorer. Well, he's had a great career at Michigan, as you've indicated. He shoots 53% from the field. He shoots 83% from the foul line. He's averaging about seven assists a game. You can't ask much more from that from him. Here it is again on that last play. Child's dropping it. Boise State has not turned the ball over much uh, this season, but uh, they're having a tough time against those big Michigan players. Early, nice lead pass by Mills. Grant takes it to the hoop. He's good and strong as well, about 195 or 200 pounds on that 6'3 frame with quickness, so he's the kind of prospect that the pros are looking for. Well, let's see. It's an 8-2 run that Michigan has fueled now with a 34-18 lead. They've never been headed. They jumped out in front early, and they lead now by some 16 points. And Michigan is hitting 75% of their shots, Bruce, 12, 15 out of 20, while Boise State 7 out of 16, 44%. Well, that's been the big difference. And uh, where they've got those shots is probably more of a factor inside, in the paint. Uh, Robinson and Grant have really been getting the ball to the big men, and they've been doing the job inside. Down the road, uh, as Boise State adjusts to that, then that should open up the perimeter, and Grant and Robinson are both capable of hitting from that three-point line. These two teams are the number three and number 14 seeds in the Western Regional. Michigan is, of course, the number three seed with its record of 24 and 7. Boise State is the number 14 seed with their record of 24 and 5. Earlier today here, North Carolina defeated North Texas State 83-65. Loyola Marymount and Wyoming hooked up in the highest scoring game in the NCAA tournament history. 234 points as Loyola Marymount won their 25th game in a row, beating Wyoming 119 to 115. There are those field goal percentages we talked about a moment ago. 15 out of 20 for Michigan. But Boise keeps coming up. 43, they were 37 at the last count, but Michigan keeps getting better. They go from 70 to 75. Doug Ustatello inside with a chop, won't go. Rebounded very quickly by Lloyd Clark. And taken back at the other end by Wilson Foster. Pretty tough for Ustatello to get that shot away. 6-2 against that 6-9 Michigan front line. He got open on the basket, but... Arnell Jones is really covered up, and he walked. Jones tonight has no baskets and two free throws. So out of Arnell Jones and Chris Childs between them, Boise State has only one basket. Well, they've averaged 14 and 16 points respectively. They're number six in the league scoring and number 12. And uh, as you've indicated, Frank, uh, they're a key part of this uh, Boise State ball club, and they just haven't been able to contribute. I think Jones' trouble is at 6'6". Six, six. He hasn't played against the kind of a front line that he's playing against here. The general, Gary Grant, goes inside. Mills with a final shot. Terry Mills now has 12 points and leads all scores. The turnovers at this point, seven against uh, Boise State, six against the University of Michigan. One well, of the big Michigan bodies inside. And you talk about basketball bodies, uh, Michigan's a great example of what you're looking for. Tried to save it, did Arnell Jones, but simply succeeded only in throwing it back inbounds to Michigan. The coach would like to have one big body like that in your lineup, and they've got three or four even when they sent through the front line. And Arnell Jones just picked up his third foul. He becomes the first player on either team to pick up three fouls. And it'll be the one and one for Michigan. Arnell Jones, who is probably, or rather, Wilson Foster, probably their best defensive player along the front line. He'll sit out with three fouls. But he's at 6'3", and he's covering somebody 6'8", who weighs about 40 more pounds than he does. So you can see the challenge that it's faced by Boise State. This big guy is an 81% free throw shooter, Glenn Rice. 6'7", 215 pounds, a junior from Flint, Michigan. Leading scorer in the Big Ten. That's his fifth point of the night. A great touch for a big guy. He can play inside and outside, so he's really tough to defense. You cover him with a smaller player to hand him outside, he takes you inside. You cover with a bigger player to hand him inside, he takes you outside. Great way to play. Nice pass.
basket by Greg Dodd, his second basket of the night. We mentioned before, he's really the only player with a physical size to match up with uh, some of those big bodies of Michigan, 6'9", 235, Greg Dodd. And Mike Sainer had just been called for a holding foul back under the basket. There's another mismatch. Mike Sainer is trying to cover Mills. Sainer's 6'6", six, six at the most. Mills at 6'9". Some people feel he's 6'10". That was Rice, excuse me, rather than Mills. Rice again with that right hand heavily taped. Slammed a dishwasher shot on it last Sunday. Didn't seem to bother him in practice yesterday, but it may have tonight in the game. I'm not sure. This ball is picked up by Douglas Sotelo. 30 seconds to play at a half. 36-20, Michigan in front. Well, they'd like to keep it. Now, Doug uh, did pass up a shot possibility, but they're going to play for one shot. Hopefully not go in at halftime any further behind in the air right now, and hopefully close that off with a three-pointer or a two-pointer. There's the time remaining in the half. No shot clock. Boise State being forced way back by the Michigan defense. Sainer, but didn't get it. So at the buzzer, it's 36-20. Michigan with a 16-point lead. As Bill Freer with that yellow towel breaks over his coat. Bobby Dye of Boise State. Both leave the floor. One of them obviously 16 points happier than the other. So that's the end of the first half with the score. The Michigan Wolver leads 36. And the Boise State Bronco is 20. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. This is an NCAA production telecast. The start of the second half of play, and I guess uh, the, the official stats pretty well bear out what we've said. I don't know offhand, uh, uh, Bruce, what the NCAA tournament record for shooting percentages is, but Michigan can't be far off of that right now. Well, I'm sure they're not at 73. Uh, great shooting percentage, 16 for 22. The important thing is eight of those 10 shots uh, have been in the paint. They've had eight out of 10 in the paint, plus four layups. So you can see they've had great shooting. Free throws, we haven't had many free throws in the ball game. I think the other area are turnovers. I thought uh, Boise State, uh, has had nine, and they really needed to create more turnovers than Michigan has if they were going to be successful tonight. And it's been the other, it's been on the other side of the coin as far as turnovers are concerned. Well, Boise State, of course, not getting a lot of scoring from their leading scorers. Arnell Jones has only two, and Chris Childs only two, and they've got to have points from those two guys. Well, I think they do, and maybe they'll bust out here in the second half. But uh, they're coming back from a from a deficit. King with two three pointers, the only two three pointers in the ball game at six is. Uh, been the leading scorer for the Boise State Broncos. And Wilson Foster, the only player with any foul difficulty with three. And for Michigan, Mills, the uh, leading scorer. And they're doing it without many points from Rice and Grant, their two leading scorers. Robinson has seven assists to go along with those six points. I think the guard play of Robinson and, and Grant, even though Grant has not scored much, he hasn't hit to. It's been all inside, and they've been doing a good job of getting the ball into Robinson, or into Hughes, and Mills, and Rice, and Bott, and you can see that's been the difference in the ball game. You know, Bruce, I just, uh, as you and I were talking, I was just thinking about the, the shooting percentage. I believe Villanova set that, didn't they, with a 78% mark in that championship game against Georgetown a couple of three years ago? Well, they shot very, very well, and that could be right. That would be a good guess. I, we'd have to go back and look in our stat sheet, but maybe we can do that as the ball game goes along. If Michigan continues to shoot as well as they have or improves on that, well, here we go, ready with the second half of play. The winner of this game will play the winner of the St. John's Florida game, which will climax the end of this first day of basketball here at the uh, Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. Earlier today, we saw the University of North Carolina defeat North Texas State by a score of 83-65. Loyola Marymount, the nation's highest scoring team, ran its record winning streak to 25 in a row, beating Wyoming 119-115. Those 234 points, the most ever in an NCAA tournament game. All right, here we go. That's Boise State in blue, Michigan in the white. Arnell Jones with the ball. Yusitello, Dobbs, Chris Childs, who's got to score this half. For Boise State to have a chance. That's Wilson Foster who's playing with three fouls. Again, what we call a complete five-man passing game. They're rotating everybody in and out, even bringing Dodd up. On the wing, as you see him over there, number 52. Trying to use the clock, but now the clock becomes a factor. They're shortening the game up. And 
and I believe Mills is called for his second foul. You know, it's something else Michigan did in the first half, Bruce. They avoided the fouls. They only picked up five in the first half. They did it. See, they're Foster at great inside position in front of Mills, but Mills is 6'10". Foster at 6'3". Could not get the shot away. Maybe even in the replay, we can't see it here. Uh, Mills might have got his hand on that ball to stand behind him. So even when they get the ball inside in great scoring position, there's not much they can do because they can't get the ball up in between the trees to get it in the basket. This is only the third free throw that Boise State has shot tonight. They've made all of them. They're three out of three. Michigan only shot six in the first half, and they made five. Wilson Foster from Inglewood, California, 6'3", 195-pound junior, 66% at the free throw line. But he makes two more. And he's a junior college transfer. They have three of those on their basketball team. They really help the program. Just getting underway in the second half. If you just joined us, 36-22, Michigan leading Boise State. Gary Grant taking it back from his teammate, Glenn Rice. Oh, and a nice jump hook. Well, that looked, looked like J.R. Reed, North Carolina's jump hook. We see more of the players using that particular shot. I think J.R. Reed is kind of, as people oh, watch him play on TV, the bigger people have been picking that up rather than turning to shoot the straight jumper. This is Arnell Jones trying to get the baseline on board and missed the shot. Reveal Robinson. Again, Boise State had a good shot, but he couldn't get it away. Grant for three. Now the All-American guard heats up and gets his first three-pointer of the night. Matter of fact, that is Michigan's first three-pointer of the game. It is, and it's his second field. I think he's only taken three shots. They just haven't had to shoot the ball outside. 41 to 22. Biggest lead of the night now for Michigan. Dodd shooting badly over Mills. And getting loose was Arnell Jones, his first field goal of the night. Leading field goal percentage man of the country. And they're two minutes into the second half before Jones gets his first basket. Did you see Grant turn on the accelerator? Well, but he stepped on the gas. He went, didn't he? Chris Charles has it taken away from him. Went block for block at each end on layups. Another one. That's three. You think size is not important in this game? Wilson Foster. Is that a two or a three? Well, I didn't see the signal. I can't tell. We'll have to look at the score. I think it's a three. 41 27. 17 and a half minutes to play. And the tempo of this half is a little, uh, a little faster. Far up. Right. Gary Mills. You think that'd be the detriment to. Uh, Boise State. Lloyd Vaught, boy, he got a nice roll. That's eight points for the 6'9 junior from Grand Rapids, Lloyd Vaught. 43-27, 16-point lead, three minutes gone to the second half. Bobby Dye standing in front of his bench, calling his team's offensive set. This is Doug Eustatello. to Dye. Cook, Dye gets it back, loses it. Eustatello. Missing the three was Wilson Foster. Ball goes out of bounds. Boise State has not been a prolific three-point uh, team this year. They've taken 234 shots, made 45% of them, but a lot of teams have shot it more often than that, as you look at Bill Frieder. Well, but, but they're the number one team in the league in regard to three points, so I, I'm sure that's been a factor in their success in the Big Sky Conference. They've utilized it better than anybody else in that league. But as you indicated, 45% uh, is great shooting for that three-point shot. Research indicates that you have to shoot 34% or better to take advantage of... Oh, Dodd really hammered Ramil Robinson. But Ramil almost got up, drew him for that stuff on that shot. He's an explosive jumper. Here it is Here again, Joe. Again. Now, here's a guy 6'2", up. He's going to try to step it, and Dodd uh, takes it away from him. Shooting two. Romeo Robinson shooting two. He's a 65% free throw shooter. He's four out of four tonight. We saw Michigan play early against Arizona, and their guards were probably the weakest part of their ball club in that particular game. But I think Robinson, with this year's experience, he's not a freshman anymore or sophomore. Uh, they really solidified their guard line, and uh, they look solid here tonight. Robinson is six out of six at the strike, and Michigan is seven out of eight. And Lee, 45-27. Wolverines are just gradually widening the margin, Bruce. 
pluck it away, you know. And uh, again, uh, with that lead, the, the advantage is there is that uh, the Bronco, Broncos are going to continue to run the passing game and run time off the clock. Yusatello gets it into Dodd. Second, nice to jump up by Black Dodd tonight. He's a transfer. He played here at Utah, so this is his home court, really. And he transferred to uh, Broncos, played as a reserve last year, and worked into the starting lineup this year. Matchup zone now by the Broncos. They've mixed that all year. And the foul inside is on Mike Singer. Boy, great quick move by Robinson again. Not sure if he was under control. That foul probably could have gone either way. Great acceleration. From the look on his face, Mike thought he had set himself, but he was still shuffling those feet a little bit. Looked like he had pretty good position. As a coach and a defensive coach like Bobby Dye, he'd really like to have that charge on that play. Ryan King, the three-point specialist for Boise State, is back in for the Broncos. He replaces Doug Yusitello. Well, that's probably the kind of game we're going to have to go to pretty soon is to let King shoot from the outside. Child, again, so far in this half, again, is unproductive as far as scoring is concerned. That is the, for the game. first free throw that Robinson has missed tonight. He's 7 out of 8, or 6 out of 7. Now he's 7 out of 8. And it is a 46-29 lead for Michigan. Arnell Jones back in the lineup for the Broncos. He has only four points tonight, one basket and two free throws. Averages better than 16 and a half points of all game. But Chris Childs has been the biggest mystery of all. He has only two points on one basket in the first half. Of course, I say mystery. Having Gary Grant stuck to you is a pretty good reason for that, I guess. Well, I think you're right because he has a reputation of the best defensive player in the Big Ten. And he's Is it on Mills or not? I think it's on Mills. Yeah, it is. Terry Mills picks up his third foul, so he becomes the first Michigan player with three fouls. And Griffin comes into the ballgame now, 6'7". He can play a lot of spots. He's going to play in the front line now and play that small forward for Michigan. He does play in the guard line and play that big guard also, so it really gives him some size when he's in there with Grant or Robinson. Now he's in there with uh, without Mills, so they lose a little size. Now Bob Garibaldi in to uh, make sure that things stay under control. Here's the inbounds pass to Arnell Jones. Got the roll. That's his second basket tonight. The 230-pounder from Chicago now has six points. Got some more of that zone again. Right, and they're spreading it now. Michigan. And here is a foul called on Michigan's Mike Griffin in trying to get the ball back. Well, that foul probably saved him a basket. Uh, Looks like he might even try to grab it intentionally. Sometimes you'll see that call. He lost the ball and we see him dive now and really grab on to the Boise State player to keep him from getting that easy layup. Three team fouls against Michigan this half, two against Boise State. Getting close to the 15-minute mark, 46-31. Michigan in front by 15. Here's Chris Childs, who has just been not been a factor tonight for Boise State. Ryan King, number 22, the three-point shooter. Trying to get it into Dodd, and Arnell Jones comes up with a loose ball, and we get a foul on... Is it Gary Grant? That's who he pointed to. Yeah, it is, Gary Grant. That will be his second foul and four against the Wolverines this half. Gary Grant, unanimous All-American. Arnell Jones, a 65% free throw shooter at the line. Here's that foul on Grant. Uh, Michigan makes a great save. Grant looks like he got him before he made his drive. Back in the ball game is Lloyd Hart, number 35 for Michigan. And Terry Mills will sit down. And Arnell Jones, two out of two at the line. As you saw there a moment ago, the most valuable player in the big sky, and that is the first miss of a free throw by Boise State. They're now four out of five. 
Well, he's a junior college transfer from San Jose. He made the all-conference team last year, second team, rather, and now this year the first team in MVP, as you've indicated. Frank has really helped this program. They've relied on the junior college program. Arnold Jones gets his third free throw of the night. So the clock says 14 minutes and 40 seconds remaining to play. There's a timeout on the court with the score, the Michigan Wolverines 46 and the Boise State Broncos 32. Former University of Arizona basketball coach Bruce Larson. Well, let's see, Bruce, at halftime, Michigan was up by 16. It's 14 now, but Boise State's got to catch up more rapidly than that because it's taken almost six minutes for them to close down two points. Well, that's true, and as the clock gets closer and closer to the end of the ball game, uh, they're going to have to up-tempo their game. They can't afford to run the clock as much as they have. But you can see the stats here. Boise continues to get a little better. Michigan's dropped to 60%, shooting from that 70% they had at halftime. Lloyd Vaughn. Walter's well, been a big factor in this ball game. He now has 10 points. And he just recently got into the starting line. I don't know how recently, but I know early in the year when we saw that he was not a starter. Hughes was a starter for Michigan. You know, they show us rebound figures of 15 to 13 in favor of Michigan. It seems like it's a much wider margin than that, doesn't it? Well, it does, but I think Michigan shot so well. There haven't been many rebounds uh, for uh, Boise State to get on the defensive end. Michigan's got all theirs on the offensive end. Basket was missed inside by Wilson Foster. But that was a great effort by Dodd to go to the board, and coaches like to see that even if you pick up a foul, as we saw him come from the high post. Got a hand on it, but he bumped into some bodies as he went up for it. Watch him come down from the high post now. Good shot. It's a great place to rebound from. Probably the best place in the world is to be on that high post when the shot goes up. And he got a chance to go on either side for that rebound. That foul a moment ago was on Greg Dodd, his second third against Boise State. Here's Chris Giles, and Gary Grant is right there waiting for him. Arnell Jones. Jones now has nine points. Well, that's where he's very effective, and he's getting his shot away a little bit more consistently in the second half. Maybe Michigan not playing as tough a defense with the lead with their big people. 14-25 remaining to play. It'll belong to Michigan, knocked out of bounds by the Broncos. Well, we had earlier today an NCAA championship record for points scored in a single game by two teams. Loyola beats Wyoming 119 to 115, and the 234 points in that game broke the old mark of 227. And Iowa beat Notre Dame 121 to 106 back in 1970. 234 points right here on this floor today. Childs picks up a very quick foul on the inbounds play. Well, the only way that might get broken this year is if Oklahoma and Loyola Marymount got together in the finals. Well, that could happen, couldn't it? Oklahoma won their game today. I believe they scored 90, 96, as I recall. Well, I think the advantage those two teams have is they play different than anybody else in the country, and so you have to prepare for them. They don't have to prepare for you. They're going to play the same way all the time. Well, coming off the close to a five-second count. And threw it away. Good along to Boise State. Good extended defensive pressure. 13 minutes to play. 48-34. Turnovers, 9 against Michigan, 8 against Boise State. Michigan continues to stay in their random man defense. Lucitello. Wilson Foster. Arnell Jones. Going to the hook. Walk with a rebound. Give you an example there. You can see why Arnell Jones scores so well in that uh, six to seven foot area. At six six, he got up and got his shot over the six nine off the hills. He's got great extension. Vaughn gets the high percentage shot. That's twelve for him, and he's got four buckets here in the second half. He can't get much higher than that. And the Michigan's uh, shooting percentage now is picking up again. Fifty to thirty four. Wolverines. Twelve minutes and fifteen seconds to play in the ball game. A three-pointer by Wilson Foster won't go. Michigan playing now with Terry Mills and Glenn Rice both on the bench. No, Rice is in the ball game. That's right. He's taking some of that wrap off his right hand. Nice move to the hook by Mike Griffin. That's his first basket of the night. Well, it leads up to 18 now, so they've added two points since uh, halftime to that lead. Pretty good spurt by Michigan right there. Chris Childs badly off the mark. 
Six. One comes down to Vaughn, and Arnell Jones picks up his third foul. Well, with nine minutes to go, you can see right away uh, Boise State out of their pattern now as they put up two quick shots, uh, and they're playing different now. So Michigan State has dictated the tempo, or Michigan has dictated the tempo, forced uh, the Broncos to shoot the ball a little quicker and shoot some perimeter shots. Bobby Dye in front of his bench, conferring with, uh, I believe, Wilson Foster. Looks like perhaps his knee's hurting him. Against his own. There's one. Attempted tip up and Dodd comes away with it. Tipped up once by Mike Griffin and then Dodd came out of there with it. Doug used to tell off. Well, the other thing that depresses you about the Michigan team is how well their big kids run the court. And I think it's the kind of basketball they play that forces them to run the court and that makes them better basketball players. But they do that well. Locking foul called on um, Glenn Rice. That's his first. Rice has been pretty quiet tonight, has only five points, but in all honesty, they haven't needed his scoring as they lead by 18 right now. Grant gets a rest. Well, their inside players, Mills and Vaught, have just dominated. Bill Trigger looking on there a moment ago. Mike Sainer, Doug Usatello. Boy, Grant's out there quick. And that was Robinson now that's taken over on the defensive Childs. Here's the tempo to Childs. Dodd. Doug used to tell those shot almost an air ball. Mills gets it. Outlet pass to Romeo Robinson. Well, he's not that shooter. Great defensive play. Chris Childs intercepting it. And the presence of Terry Mills. That's going to be a two shot foul. I guarantee he saw Mills as he came down that lane. <laughs> Good thing he hit him on the side. He doesn't really hit him flush here as we see. Great pass. This is Childs. Hasn't been very productive. Hits him on the side. Mills didn't really have good enough position. There's a timeout of the court with a score. Michigan 52, Boise State 34. up again Bruce they are now hitting 22 out of 30 so we show them with 73 percent Boise State still having a difficult time shooting 36 percent everything else pretty even well that continues to be the difference in the ballgame Michigan dropped down to 60 percent but in the last run they, what, they had six great this, uh, this second half so they're back up there in this half Michigan has turned it over four times Boise State none but it really hasn't uh, hadn't helped them here's Chris Childs and we said at halftime that he had to begin to come alive scoring-wise, and that's only his third point of the night. 6'3", junior from Bakersfield. He's an 85% free throw shooter. He ranks 18th in the nation in free throws. And he shows you why with his technique there, getting a couple. 52-36, Michigan. The winner of this game will play at 12-20 on Saturday against the winner of this Florida St. John's game which will be the final game of the day played here this evening. Then the Loyola Marymount North Carolina game will follow 30 minutes after that game is over on Saturday. And you know Dean Smith is already thinking about what am I going to do about that up-tempo game of Loyola Marymount. That's right. They're the ones that have to prepare to adjust. Glenn Rice lost it. Brian Quinn with it. Second basket of the night for Chris Childs. He's got six points. Well, he needs to come alive and get himself on the perimeter now. Last time down the floor, Michigan handled the ball pretty well. Ran the clock down, but eventually threw it away. Tries the lob and knocked out of bounds off the hands. Uh, when they spread that zone defense as much as Michigan is spreading it right now, that's going to leave them vulnerable to those lobs behind it. But it also creates some turnovers, so it's kind of a trade-off. Uh, so far, that's been to Boise State's advantage. We'll probably continue to see them use it, see if they can cut that gap a little bit more. Mark Hughes is in the ballgame now for Michigan, number 55. He's spelling Terry Mills. Giles. Jamil Robinson works over two screens to stay with him. Mike Singer. 
why Robinson's having to stay with, work over about three or four screens to stay with uh, Giles. Dodge shooting and missing, and couldn't save it. Arnell Jones gave it a valiant try, but couldn't do it. Boy, he did. He's really working hard in there against those big bodies of Michigan. But it's been pretty tough for Boise State to come up with any offensive boards. They just have to shoot so well because they're not going to get much more than one shot. And the shooting has hurt them in this ball game. Michigan led by 16 at the half. They lead by 14 now with eight and a half minutes left to play. So there's been no real appreciable run by Boise State. Michigan has sort of held them at bay like a boxer with a jab. Camille Robinson, Michigan using some of the clock now. Ten seconds to shoot. And Robinson does, didn't get it. And again, there's that size inside. Lloyd Vaught tried to put back and didn't get it. Good job around the clock down. They ended up with a good shot. Didn't go down for them, but if they can do that each time down the floor, that'll shorten the game. Clock has dipped under eight minutes now. 7.55 remaining. 52-38. Michigan in front. Chris Childs. Oh, the three. Chris Childs, who had only two points at halftime, has nine now. Boise State's cut it down to 11. Seven consecutive points now by Boise State. Michigan has failed to score in that period of time. No longer. Rub that out because big Mark Hughes gets the basket. Good job of getting inside when they hit two to get the tempo back in their favor. 54-41, Michigan by 13. Seven minutes left to play in the game. Arnell Jones. Dodd trying to tip. Mike Singer can't find a place for it. And he's fouled inside. Foul is on Glenn Rice. That'll be his second. And that's seven now in this half against Michigan. So Sainter, I guess he'll be shooting two, but that will put Boise State in the one and one. Mike Sainter is a 75% free throw shooter. Number 6'7", 225 senior from Boise. Mike Griffin returns to the lineup now for the Wolverines. And Glenn Rice will sit down. Sainter's really helped this uh, Boise State team. He's the top reserve in the conference, voted that uh, honor. He's been averaging about five points a game, 3.6. Well, he got it. A little uncertainty to it, but he finally got it. He's got a younger brother, a freshman at the Washington University that I think is going to be a real good basketball player here on the West Coast. They look a lot alike. Exactly seven minutes to play as Mike Sainter drains a couple of free throws. And it's back to 11 again. And returning to the lineup for Boise State is number 24, Wilson Foster. Boise State fans, who are a little bit more numerous than the Michigan fans here, trying to get their team to come alive with an 11-point deficit. Gary Grant, the general, back to the ball game now for the Michigan Wolverines. Boise State goes back to the man of now real aggressive. And Michigan using the clock very effectively. But not effectively that time. Three on one. Here's the tell of it. Here's the head down there. Jones with the fast break and the Boise State feels that they're making a run. They've cut it down to nine. Get down to a tough ball game now. Michigan making a lot of turnovers. Change the defense again. Back to the pitch. Well, it's closest since it's been back with four minutes remaining in the first half. But it was a ten-point ball game. Now Boise State has cut it down to nine. Six minutes, 18 seconds to play in the ball game. There's a timeout of the court with our score. The Michigan Wolverines 54 and the Boise State Broncos 45. Bruce, I don't know about the players, but the Boise State fans are in a frenzy right now, and I think we're going to take a look at that last play just before the timeout. It kind of shows you how they've uh, gotten themselves back to within nine points. Well, a great steal here, and a pass to Doug. That's a tell Here's a great bounce pass, right in traffic. That's where you want to use it for the layup. Right now, what's happening? The tempo of the game is strictly in Boise State's favor. They're forcing Michigan to handle the ball for a period of time on offense, and the longer... 
Michigan handles it, the more mistakes as we see here. Seven turnovers. And Boise State has not turned over the ball a single time. Ramil Robinson there is another one. Eight turnovers by the Wolverines. A great defense. Here would make it a seven-point ball game. It's strictly a half-court game right now. No running the court with Michigan. No easy baskets. Inside, it's a seven-point ball game as Wilson Foster leads. And suddenly that pendulum has swung the other way, and with 5.50 remaining, it is a 54-47 lead for Michigan. Just the kind of game Boise State wants. And the Wolverines have turned the ball over eight times in this half. Boise now has outscored Michigan 13-2. to two. Back to the zone. Again, Michigan not sure what they're doing. Having to handle the ball and try to figure out what should we do. 13 of the last 15 points by Boise State. Lloyd Vaught misses it and is fouled by Dodd. Against Dodd, his third. Against uh, Boise State, their fifth. Boise State will make it their sixth. Fourth foul on Giles. And Vaught will be at the line, a 71% free throw shooter. Good shooter for a big man. Now both teams are, will be in the one-on-one -on, -one on the, uh, any fouls committed, so free throws are going to be important in this next five minutes. Back in the ball game comes three-point specialist Brian King. In this half, Boise State has stolen the ball ten times, or for the ball game. Boise State has stolen it ten times, Michigan only twice. Their defense is better. Michigan's offense is not as good in the half-court game. And they're forcing Michigan to play some good defense down at the other end, as we just saw in the last play. Wilson breaks loose on a give-and-go pass. Boyvalk, averaging 10.3 for ball game, is above that now with 13. Rebounded by Greg Dodd. 55, 47, 5.22 to play. Boise State back to within eight. Now they can play their tempo motion game. Reveal Robinson. That'll be a one and one. Robinson picks up his first foul, and so Boise State will have a chance to get it to within six with a couple of free throws. And now Terry Mills, the gargantuan 6'10, 230-pound sophomore center, comes back in. Loy Vaught comes out. Robinson comes out of the ball game. Well, Michigan really has a big lineup in there now. Griffin will play that off guard position. They're really running a single guard offense with Gary Grant now, and then with four big guys. Griffin 6'7. Mills, 6'9", Rice, 6'7", and Hughes at 6'7", or 8", so that's a big lineup. Doug Usatello getting his third point of the night. He is a 71% free throw shooter. He makes this one. It will be 55-49. He did it. Two free throws by Usatello, 55-49, and Boise State has got it down to six with over five minutes to play. Possession's important now. The general threw it away. Gary Grant tried to fire it into Terry Mills, and Mills wasn't ready for it. And that is yet another turnover against Michigan, and the basket here would make it a four-point pass. They've got a man wide open, and Mills, or Vaught it is, saves it. Nice play by Boy Vaught. Or was it Hughes? It must have been Hughes. But another turnover against Michigan. Talk about turnovers. I'm Frank Fallon with former University of Arizona basketball coach Bruce Larson. We've got 4.52 remaining, and Boise State has battled back now to within six. The Michigan leading at one point by 18, and it's now down to a six-point lead. Michigan has not hit a shot the last five times down the floor. They've turned the ball over. Got a foul in one possession. A basket here with four minutes and 30 seconds to play. We'll make it a four-point game. Missing badly was Wilson Foster. A basket there would have made a big difference, Bruce. But would have. Michigan really has to get something done right here. Grant's picking up his dribble, uh, I feel, way too soon. He's either penetrating or picking it up too soon. He's having a tough time creating anything for Michigan. Doug Houston Tello, who is the top defensive player on the Boise State team, is on Grant now. Here's Hughes. Block under four minutes and twice. It's a two-pointer. Big basket by Rice. That's his first basket here in the second half. He's not shot much outside. Of course, he can get the ball inside, but uh, he needs to come alive for him. That'll help. He's a good perimeter shooter. Maybe as good as they have on the team. Bill Frieder looks at the clock. Three minutes, 43 seconds to play. Michigan up now by eight points. 
So there's a timeout with three minutes and 43 seconds remaining with a score, Michigan 57, Boise State 49. Six minutes and 51 seconds, Boise State has outscored Michigan 15 to five. But in the second half, Boise State has simply taken a lot more shots than Michigan. They're nine of 23, Bruce, for 39%. Michigan is eight out of 14 for 57%. But uh, Boise State has also hit 11 out of 12 free throws in that period of time. Well, that's the time to hit them. The tempo of the game is much in the favor of the Bronco State, uh, or Boise State Broncos, as we indicated. Michigan's trying to handle the ball and use the clock a little bit and to get it inside. Uh, Boise's defense has really been tough. They've really squeezed it up a little bit. Chris Giles taken to the basket and was fouled. Did not get the hoop, but was fouled, I believe, by Mark Hughes. Michigan. Number 55. It was Hughes, his second. And that kind of a play doesn't use any time on the clock. Get it in a quick, quick shot on the foul line. Chance for two, and then a chance to play some good defensive pressure after made free throws. They got the right guy at the line. 85% shooter. Chris Charles, right to the bottom. He is three out of three tonight. Has 10 points now after a very slow start, but he failed to score in the first half. All of those 10 have come here in the second half. Right where they want to be. Full court pressure. 57 51, 339 remaining. Gary Grant. The general took charge. When he did, did what had to be done. 59 to 51. 325 remaining in the ballgame. Michigan by eight. In and out on Arnell Jones. That was a big miss. Big rebound by Griffin. That's a big lineup that Michigan has. Four players, 6'7", a better along with Grant at 6'3". Three. three minutes in the ballgame. 2.55 in counter. Michigan trying to protect an eight-point lead. King commits the reaching foul. So that'll put Michigan at the stripe. Kirk is a good first round shooter. Even those big guys from Michigan all have a good touch. Well, Bobby Dye not happy with that foul. He is really after uh, Ryan King because that puts Michigan at the stripe in the one-on-one. -on -one. Now they're maybe not at the point where they need the foul, but it paid off for them right there. Griffin missing the free throw. And with 2.29 to go, it's 59-51 Michigan. Chris Childs being guarded again now by Gary Grant. There's King. And the big body of Mark Hughes is what kept Arnell Jones from getting that rebound. You're right. The, the body was the difference. He really didn't jump. He just kind of screened him off. So uh, Jones there couldn't get up and get the ball the way he wanted to. So it's nice to have big bodies. Two minutes exactly left to play. Michigan by eight. Winner of this game plays the winner of the St. John's Florida ball game. Wide open, but missing the shot was Ned Rice. Well, that was a great play by Mills. Big guy 6'10", put the ball on the floor, made a great pass for the three-pointer. Childs missed the three. Ball run down by Brian King. A minute 35 to go. There you see the time in the lower right-hand part of the screen. Chris Childs inside had to hold him, but he didn't ever get the shot away. Again, the big size makes a difference. Made a great penetration, but no place to go. And Childs commits the foul. His fourth. He'll send Gary Grant to the line. Gary has not shot a free throw yet tonight. But as I recall, according to Michigan statistics, in the last five minutes of games this year, Grant has hit 26 out of 30 free throws. He's an 83% shooter. That's not bad shooting. That's a lot of Consensus All-American. I guess he is the uh, first All-American since Ricky Green back in 1977 in Michigan. Well, I thought about a stretch about five minutes ago. He didn't have a very good uh, three or four minutes. 
has not scored a great deal tonight. He has only nine points. And has spent a lot of time on the bench. One minute, five seconds to go. 59 to 53. On Al Jones with the bucket. He has five baskets, all have come here in the second half, and a total of 13 points. So the clock is down to 59 seconds remaining as the Michigan Brain Trust will plan what they'll do with our score and a timeout of the court. It is 59 for the Michigan Wolverines, 53 for the Boise State Broncos. Frank Fallon back with Bruce Larson at the John M. Huntsman Center on the campus of the University of Utah. And Bruce, this has turned into a pretty good basketball game. Boise State's cut it down to six points with only 59 seconds remaining. And as you see, Michigan has a couple of timeouts left. Boise State has one. Well, they can kill the clock. Uh, plenty of time for a couple of three-pointers, and we're close to an overtime. And if Boise State can score, they've got one timeout to use to stop the clock. As you've indicated, Frank, Michigan has two. All right, they set up to run three pointers. Full court pressure by Boise State. And a foul called on Wilson Foster. He had three at the half, has gone all this time without getting his fourth until now. Well, I'm sure Boise State wanted to go for the steal, and if they didn't get it, uh, the foul. And uh, Michigan has not been good at the foul line here in the last two minutes. Uh, two of their better shooters have missed. Coach and they get a miss here, we'll give them an opportunity to score that three. And that used up only one second of the clock, 58 seconds remaining in the ball game. Glenn Rice tonight is one for two. And he's an 81% shooter, but Grant was 83, and he missed his last time in. So pressure, maybe a little tired, the big guys. Uh, these are important free throws for Michigan. Rice right through the bottom. The leading scorer in the Big Ten with an average of 22.1, but tonight he has only 11. And Gary Grant, his teammate, has only nine. So if it was Bobby Dye's intent to slow down his two big scores, he's done that. Boise State just needed to shoot better early. They still got a shot at it. Let's see if they set up for three. Down by eight with 54 seconds to play. Ryan King is their long-range bomber. King to three. Had to hurry. That one taken by Wilson Foster wouldn't go. Nice dream by Greg Rod. Boy, great follow. 30 seconds. Six point lead. Six point lead for the Michigan foul. Wolverines. It's too bad Boise State foul. They got Grant to throw the ball away again on that play. And Doug Usatello picks up his second foul. Last time at the line, the Grant missed the front end of a on one. And the line. Terry shooter, the pressure's on him. There he is, an All-American guard, Gary Grant. Tonight, way below his average, only nine points. Boise State uses one of those two remaining timeouts. With 30 seconds remaining to play, well, I guess that's their last timeout. Michigan has two remaining. Well, the NCAA is conducting research during this basketball tournament, and we'd like your participation. Would you like to see more women's basketball on television? If your answer is yes, dial 900-260-2221. If your answer is no, dial 900-260-2222. 30 seconds left to play. Michigan leading by a score of 61-55. Oh, we've seen the slow tempo team dominate this particular game and the game previous to this. Loyola Marymount with an up tempo game dominated the game. So you can control the game either way. The team that dictates the tempo to their style or closest to their style usually is the most successful. And uh, I think Boise State has not been able to shoot or complement their slow tempo game with good shooting during the ball game. Right now they're playing the way they want to play, but it might be a little too late. They've got 30 seconds to change this scene right here. It was a 16-point lead at halftime for the Michigan Wolverines. I don't believe they ever increased that 16-point lead that they had at halftime. If they did, well, let's see. They did get it up to 19. That's right. They sure did at one point. So their biggest lead has been a 19-point advantage. So certainly it's to the credit of Coach Bobby Dye and his Boise State team, Bruce, that they got it down at one point to a six-point ball game. And even now it is a 61-55 lead. 
with 30 seconds to play. Well, I don't know what the turnovers are this half, but they at one point there were eight to zero in favor of Boise State. Boise State had not turned the ball over at all, and Michigan had turned it over eight times. And I think since that time, they've turned it over a couple more times. So the defense, aggressive half-court defense of Boise State has had its effect on the Michigan team here late in this second half. Well, Boise State since the 10-minute mark, so we're looking at about nine and a half minutes, have made up um, 12 points on Michigan. A 21-21 to nine run for Boise State since the clock read 10.04, and it's down to 30 seconds right now. Well, probably Kittle, a little too much to overcome, especially for a slow tempo team and a team that uh, has a habit of moving the basketball around the perimeter and making a number of passes before they shoot it. If you play that kind of basketball, it's a little tough for you to catch up uh, because of your habits that you've developed through the year. It's tough to put the ball up quick, but that's what they're going to have to do right now in this next 30 seconds. They need a miss here from Gary Grant, and then they need a three-pointer. And they got the miss, and they got the ball. Now they can't wait long because that clock is moving. Ryan King tried to get the screen, does get the screen, gets the shot away. He got it free. Uh, King got the free. It's a good ball game. 15 seconds left to play. Now remember, Boise State has no more timeouts left. And that's what hurt him right now. They could have had one. Uh, they really needed one bad. They, did they foul Mills? They fouled him. Yep. That stops the clock with 13 seconds to go. Boy, that three-point play has really changed college basketball. It has, and that's a good play right there by Boise State. Put Mills on. They've been successful now. You know, that's a poor play if you come down and make the free throws, but Michigan has really helped them. They haven't made the front end of a one-on-one -on -one yet the last three times, and they've had very good free-throw shooters at the line. And Mills has not been at the line yet tonight. This will be his first free-throw opportunity. He has a 73% free-throw shooter, but he hasn't shot one yet tonight. And we consider that good free-throw shooting, but they've hit the three previous shooters, Rice, Grant, twice, have been over 80% shooters, and they haven't been able to convert. One and one for Terry Mills. Sophomore from Romulus, Michigan. Missed it. Get it along to Boise State. With only 12 seconds to go, Michigan, Michigan calls the timeout. Well, Boise State's got an opportunity. Michigan, well, that's an interesting timeout by Bill Frieder, Bruce, with 12 seconds to go. I guess he wants to be real sure of what he's doing defensively. Right, I think they want to make sure that uh, they take away the three-point shot. They don't really care if Michigan would go in and get a layup and take a two-point shot. They set two double screens for King on that last series, and he got his shot away. So again, they've got to decide what they're going to do as far as defense is concerned, and then maybe what they're going to do also if Boise State should score a three-pointer. They would still have maybe four or five seconds on the clock. Well, we want to take this opportunity to thank NCAA Basketball Committee Representative Ken Free, our tournament manager, Ned Alger, and tournament media coordinator, Bruce Woodbury. From the University of Michigan, Director of Athletics, Don Cannon, head basketball coach Bill Frieder and his staff, and Sports Information Director, Bruce Maddy. And from Boise State University, Director of Athletics, Gene Blameyer, head basketball coach Bobby Dye and his staff, and Sports Information Director, Max Corbett. Well, 12 seconds still to go. It is a 61 to 58 lead for Michigan, but Boise State has the basketball, and as uh, Bruce Larson pointed out, with a three-pointer, we could go to overtime. Well, what options? Uh, you could even foul quickly and uh, not intentional and put Boise State on the line even if they make both free throws then you're, re then you're, uh, you're relying on your basketball team to get the ball inbound safely so it's kind of interesting what, what, what might happen Bruce they tell us too now that uh, that, uh, the, that the timeout situation is Boise State does have one timeout left and Michigan has one left so I thought it was uh, thought it was two and nothing, but it's one and one. Well, I thought if, they, if Boise State had a timeout, I think they would have called one after that last basket. But maybe you're right. I only get four timeouts now in this uh, tournament. You usually get five, but with the TV timeouts coming three times each half, it could be that one of those are a TV timeout. Well, failure to shoot free throws has really hurt Michigan here in the second half. They have missed the front end of four one-and-ones that are only six out of 12 at the stripe in the second half. And they're a good free throw shooting team, 73% for the year, but it's really been a downfall for them. And if uh, they aren't successful in this ballgame, they can trace it back right to the free throw line in the last two minutes. Well, the uh, strategy for Boise State would appear to be obvious. They've got to have a three-pointer with 12 seconds to go. They're down by three. Michigan might even force them into a two-pointer. Pressure. You can use the clock. Brian King, they've got their shooter. Didn't get it. 
A foul with one second left. So Brian King had to shoot from about 25 feet away and didn't get it. And, and you have to give one second left. Michigan, Michigan credit for good defense. Uh, they extended the shot, you know, just a little further. They knew what they had to do. Boise State, on the other hand, got the shot. Well, Michigan will apparently hold everybody back. 61-58, one second to play. And at the line for the Wolverines, Mike Griffin missed his only free throw tonight. But it would be awfully hard with one second to go for anything more than just a desperation length of the floor heave for uh, Boise State. And Wright might even have, a, you know, even a miss would start the clock right away, but a make would make it impossible for them to... Well, that really won it. That won the ball game right there, didn't it? Four-point lead with one second to go. They finally hit the one they needed to. So Mike Griffin hit the free throw that Michigan had to have. That makes the second one a little bit easier. One second to go. It's a five-point lead. So the Michigan Wolverines have prevailed, but not before a scare by the Boise State Broncos of the Big Sky Conference. So the ball game is over. It's 63-58, Michigan over Boise State. We'll be back to the John M. Huntsman Center in just a moment. NCAA West Region second round action. The